everyone needs their own website and you don't even need to pay for it. And you can be completely independent. Now, obviously you still need to buy your domain name. Uh, I have ChrisTitus.com, um, but you can get anything. You can get a .info, XYZ, whatever uh, domain name you want. Some of them are cheaper than others. I usually buy these from Namecheap.com. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description, but if not, just type Namecheap.com and uh, you can get really good pricing. Don't go with big ones like one and one or GoDaddy or any of those guys. Uh, they're going to rip you off. They're going to charge you too much money where I find Namecheap probably gives me the best deal out of any registrar out there. But with that said, um, you really shouldn't need a server either. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, do a virtual private server or host your own server and then port forward. And honestly, this is so 20, 15 years ago that you really don't need to be doing this anymore. Serverless is the future and the future is now. And honestly, I've, I've talked a little bit about this and I'll go into more of the content management system and working with a team and those types of things a little bit, I'll touch a little bit on the professional side of things, but for you, you know, the person that just needs their own website, you should be using Netlify because it's free and it is amazing, like world changing. <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. And everything uh, that I show today, will you be using GitHub or you can use GitLab or Bitbucket, whichever one you want for uh, collaboration and to host the files. But for the actual deployment, Netlify for individuals is 100% free, $0 a month. So uh, that's going to be good for 99.9% .9 of you out there. Uh, as ChrisTitus.com usually gets several thousand visitors every day, and I still haven't even touched uh, their bandwidth cap because guess what? Static sites don't use much bandwidth, and in turn, I don't even need to upgrade to a $45 a month or a $10 a month or whatever it is to use this. So let's get on the desktop and go over uh, hosting your website serverless through content delivery networks like Netlify. So to start out with, here is their pricing page. As I said, $0 a month, you can look, you get one concurrent build, you get one team member, and you get 100 gigabytes of bandwidth usage a month which is plenty. <laughs> like I said, if I'm not touching it, you're definitely not, as I have over 10 years of data sitting on my website. Um, obviously, I'm not hosting any really large files, otherwise that would get chewed up pretty quick. But uh, with that, moving forward, you can see what's all included. Uh, if you wanted to add extra members and doing like C full CMS, it will add up and you will end up paying money per month. But even with just two team members, uh, you could do this, or you could just share the same Git username if you wanted. I mean, it just depends on how you want to set this up. Personally, if you're a business and you have two web designers or three, you probably should go with the business plan. But anyway, moving on through this, I just wanted to show it is free for an individual and it works fantastic. So going over to sites, you can see I already have ChrisTitus.com on here, but we're going to create a new site and we'll do it through Git. And I'm gonna use GitHub for this, but you can use GitLab or Bitbucket. So choose who you want. If you hate Microsoft, choose GitLab, you know. Uh, but I'm gonna use GitHub for this. And then you can see all the repos here. Now, we need to actually create the repo before we go to this page because I haven't yet. So we'll go over to github.com and then we'll just create new repo and we'll just name this backup website. And we'll go ahead hit create repository and then it's ready. So now we can actually do a commit to it and all that. So uh, before, uh, to do a commit, I'm gonna go ahead and commit a Hugo site. You could use Jekyll, you can use a lot of other uh, management systems out there. I've done a whole video on Hugo. I'll link it up in the top. Also over on ChrisTitus.com, you can see like my initial setup of Hugo and how to modify and all these other things. I kind of go into a pretty big in depth, but really, if you don't want to go this far in depth and you just want a basic website with a theme, uh, just go gohugo.io. And from gohugo.io, you can just do quick start and get going. Now, obviously, since I'm in uh, Linux, I can just 
do a quick install of Hugo. Most of them have it built in. If you're on Mac, you can just do brew install. If you're on Windows, you can use something like chocolatey install Hugo from there. Any way you want to skin that cat, you can. Create your new site, add a theme, and just go through this getting started and you're, you're off and running. So with that said, I already have a website. So let's go ahead and copy that over. So anytime I want to look at my website, I just do Google Hugo server. Oh, I didn't install Hugo on my website yet. So let's go ahead and this is Hugo. So if we just do Hugo server, it'll go ahead and build our website for us locally. Anytime you do any builds with Hugo, you can easily just do a quick build and then just do local host. And then you can preview your website. So uh, go through the getting started and then run these commands, install Hugo, and, and then just kind of get your initial site set up. And as you see, I have just all these different ways of categories and you can actually search for like Hugo and uh, you have all the things that you have on a normal website, but none of the overhead as this is all serverless. And how it would work is as soon as I go ahead and make a change, let's go ahead and make a new post, right? We'll just go Hugo, new, and then I'm gonna go posts. 2020 and uh, we'll go windows services dot markdown. This is a upcoming video about me minimizing windows services that I need to make. So then I'll just go Vim and we'll paste this markdown file right into here. And then I would just sit here and edit everything I need. So for this uh, windows services, it's going to be windows category. We'll go ahead, leave this as a draft because I don't really want to publish this to the world yet, but I just wanted to do a commit real fast just so you guys can see it. And just a, the, my brief description is just going to be, this article goes over minimizing Windows services and changing Windows 10 settings to be under 50 running processes. Save that out. And as you see, we're ready to do a commit. Uh, now, obviously, if we want to look at this as it's a draft, it's not going to be committed directly to the website, but... If we just do dash D, it's going to show drafts and what it would look like on the website. So if we go to the home of localhost, you'll see, hey, Windows service is there. And then it just kind of shows this basic setup of the website. So uh, let's go ahead. With that done, uh, we're going to actually commit this. And I would just do a standard git commit. So I'd add the file first. So we do an add dash A for any, any files in this folder, we'll go ahead and add. Then we'll do a git commit dash A. We'll go ahead and say adding Windows services draft. That's gonna be this commit. And then we're just gonna do a git push. And we're just gonna push this change over. All right, and that's done. So back in our Hugo site, if we go into here, you'll see this site's already created. You'll see that it's already auto building. So anytime you do a git push, it would auto build. Now, obviously, if you're working in a team, you do a pull and then a push. So if a, a collaborator went ahead and added a post, you'd pull down their changes and then you'd push yours. So right here, I do a couple of add-ins. Uh, we have an image optimizer. We go ahead and build the actual site right here. And then anything else, I think I have a search index and some other things being built in the background but it's very powerful as it's all done automatically. You don't need to come in here and see this. I just wanted to just show you my deployment log. And then as far as the web page speed, obviously this is pretty slow. Two seconds for a full page load, a uh, little under a meg for page size request about 55. So this is a bit bloated for a Hugo install. And if I go through here, I'll see there's a couple things we can change. Tag managers there which is giving us a little more speed. I could probably do some things with the actual fonts here. You see, we lose about 300 milliseconds of load time there. And what's this 500? Uh, again, that's Google ads. And this one over here, that's also Google ads. So Google ads is probably costing us about a second to a second and a half. Um, but we can probably take out this guy, which is sacrificing about 152 and just remove the tag manager. So as this is building, it, because the image optimization takes a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead, come back into here, and we're gonna do a change. I'm using a pretty complex Hugo theme. And if I go into my config directory and default, I have all my TOML files kind of separated out here. Let's go into the params. 
and I'm gonna find that tag and delete it from parameters. All right, and I found the tag, so we're just gonna delete that tag out. And now we can just do another uh, git status just to see what's going on. Git add a, git commit dash a, remove Google tags, as it was costing about 150 milliseconds on the waterfall. And then we're gonna do a git push again. This is gonna push out another iteration of our site. So if we come back into here, you can see that it went through and did all the image optimization, which is pretty extensive as I've had this site for about 10 years. It used to be a WordPress site until I config, uh, converted it over to static as it just is so much faster. Um, and then this already finished out. So let's go ahead, go back. And as you can see, it already saw, hey, this is the Windows Services draft, and now we're going ahead and move to uh, Google Tags, and it's already building that out. So this builds on the fly and launches. Now I know that looks kind of complex as I was mainly in the terminal, um, but you could also do like a VS Code type situation, and that would be a little easier for a lot of web developers that aren't comfortable with the terminal. And you know what, let me show you that real fast. All right, so what I would do is actually go back to the root of our website directory. And let's say you wanted to edit everything in a GUI. Obviously, this is the power of having like a static site. You can edit all those TOML files, partials, everything you need uh, just using code. So let's say you are more of a graphic user. You can easily just come right in here and go, okay, I need to edit my config TOML, um, go into layouts. You know, I'm gonna change the sidebar up a little bit, change all your code in here. And you can even set up uh, going in and, and doing theming. Obviously, since I just got this, um, I could actually need to grab some like Tomal, better Tomal language, probably should install that. Just some quality of life. For those that don't like the terminal, obviously get in here and use code or whatever text editor you want to use. And you can do commits directly from here if you're not you know, big on terminal because you can actually connect up your Git directly to VS Code do all your commits and it'll actually tell you, hey, this is down, this has changed. But I just wanted to showcase a VS Code real quick because uh, that's a good little open editor for uh, like a lot of web designers probably would like to use instead of using a terminal solution. So what are your thoughts on this? I think this is the future. When it comes to web design and collaborating, uh, logging into some CMS and then doing it through the web, it's so cumbersome um, and it just is kind of nasty. And once you learn Markdown in the new structure of just doing it through like a, a static site like Hugo, uh, you can use Jekyll, you can use other ones. It's so much faster. My workflow is way better doing it this method than it ever was WordPress. And then on top of that, you have all the security things you pick up because guess what? You can't really hack a static site generator if you don't have like the username and password to log into like Netlify or something like that. You really can't do much damage or get into your GitHub and do a commit, you know, rogue commits and stuff like that. That's really your only attack surface, but people actually trying to do SQL injections and other things that you get run into all the time on WordPress and uh, any CMS like Joomla, they are all vulnerable, where obviously something like this is way better and also way faster. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.